Welcome to the International School of Tailoring. My name is Reza and this is going to be your seventh lesson of our How to Make a Bespoke Jacket series. In the last lesson, we looked at weave. Today's lesson, I'm going to be talking to you about construction lines. Now, these are all basic principles that you need to understand because the connection of those principles will deepen your understanding. And so if we look at our connection map, we'll see construction lines at the top, and that is connected to fittings, pattern cutting systems, striking out, and the warp and the weft. The way it's connected to fittings is obviously we need our construction lines to follow our way through the fitting and keep them parallel to the floor. The way it's connected to pattern cutting systems is that every pattern cutting system has some sort of a reference point. They all begin from an anchor and derive their points from that anchor. The way construction lines are connected to striking out is of course we need to lay our pattern with the construction lines on it on our fabric. And so when we're striking out, we need to have that information. And the way it's connected to the warp and the weft is that construction lines usually, especially on modern cutting systems, represent either the warp or the weft of the fabric. Now, why is this important? Well, these are guiding principles, meaning that they give you a set of restrictions and guidelines at the same time. And this is of course important because when you're working on something, you want to reduce the infinite amount of possibilities and approaches to organize your actions and make your work more systematic. And any system has restrictions and guidelines, of course. And other reasons why construction lines are important is that they allow you to put your panels next to one another in such way that you can read the figuration of those patterns. If you can't lay them in a specific way, then everything goes and that changes the negative space in between your panels and patterns and therefore you can't really read where fabric is taken away or where it's added. All this aside, this is what we're going to do in today's lesson. First, we're going to take the body and we're going to simplify it in two different ways. Then I'm going to show you where the main construction lines are. And then last but not least, we're going to take the construction lines and the simplified version of the body and turn it into a pattern at different stages. Ready? Let's go. Now let's begin with a short story. Way before we had fabric, people used to make their garments from fur and leather and plants. Most of these garments were just patched together as people collected the furs and the skins. But when fabric was invented, this patching of things together turned into a more sophisticated technique called draping. Now, fabric is slightly different to fur and leather because it has a grain. Therefore, it behaves differently. It has restrictions because you can't just lay your patterns on top of your fabric because it may end up on the bias and you don't want that sometimes. So what happened was as people began to develop cutting systems, they were more and more considerate of this weave. The solution to this problem became the construction lines on the patterns because they were representative of the warp and the weft of the fabric. We had vertical and horizontal construction lines that turned flat pattern cutting into what it is today. So what are these construction lines? Well, let me tell you. The first construction line is called the center front. That's number one. The second one is called the center back. That's number two. And the third one is called the chest line. And that's number three. Now, where are these located on the body and on the pattern? Let's begin with the mannequin, which is a simplified version of our human body. So, this is our mannequin. If we would split the mannequin in two, we would have one line vertically right down the middle on the front and the back. The one on the front is the center front, the one on the back is the center back. If we would wrap a tape around the chest of this mannequin, we would have the chest line. The chest line is always supposed to be parallel to the floor regardless of the angle that you're looking at the figure. So if you're standing from the side or the front or the back, it should always be more or less parallel to the floor. Now, 
let's say we want to create a pattern. How do these construction lines reflect on our pattern? Let's simplify this figure even more and turn it into a cylinder. Here we have a cylinder. Now, obviously, if we would split the cylinder in half, we would have a center front. This would go over there. We would have a center back. And around the chest of the cylinder, we would have our chest line. The pattern for the cylinder is going to be one half of the cylinder because we always double our fabrics, uh, our patterns on the fabric. So one half of the cylinder is going to be a basic square, but it will have a center front, a center back and a chest line. You double this, you wrap it around and you put it together, becomes this cylinder. If we would add a little bit more detail to the simplified cylinder, because we're not really cylinders, we're almost a cylinder that is squeezed from the front and the back. And if we add some sharp edges and corners to that, we would turn into a cuboid with a triangular prism resting on top of it. This area is going to be hollow and empty because that's the armhole. But even then, we're going to have a center front, a center back, and a chest line. Now making a pattern for this simplified shape is going to be a basic rectangle for the front panel, a rectangle for the side, and a rectangle for the back. Again, there is a center front, a center back, and a chest line. Even if we would take it one step further and we would separate these panels just like we do on a real jacket pattern and we would have all these separated panels so that we can work on them individually. Let's say we add some detail. We do a neck curve, a shoulder line, front side, the same on the back. We can even add a lapel, whatever, doesn't really matter. There is always going to be a center front, a center back, and a chest line. What does this mean? This means that regardless of the pattern and the garment that you're making, you will always have to deal with construction lines. And that is what's so beautiful about them. They are always present. Makes them one of the most fundamental elements of pattern cutting and of course construction. Now let's see how this reflects on our small paper patterns. So what we have here in front of us is a 3D representation of the simplified body that I just drew on the board. Here we have the cylinder, here we have the cuboid, and here we have the cuboid with a few added details. Underneath these 3D shapes we have the full pattern and below them we have just one half of the pattern with all the panels split. Now the reason why I've done this is because as soon as you turn this 3D shape into a pattern, you will easily see the center front, center back and chest line reflected in an abstract and flat way. This is important because we're going to lay these patterns, of course, on a piece of fabric. And each one of these construction lines turns into a reference to the fabric. So the center front and back become usually the length grain, the warp of the fabric. These are placed parallel to the selvage. The chest line usually becomes the cross grain. This is the grain that is perpendicular to the selvage. Now, if you look at all these different steps, from the simple one all the way to the most advanced one, you'll see that there is always a consistency of a chest line, center front and center back, regardless of the outer shape of the pattern. Even if we look at this final pattern here and we put a sleeve on top, the sleeve should still match the horizontal grain on the chest line so that the chest line runs from the forepart to the top sleeve to the back sleeve the under sleeve sorry the side panel and the back panel here is the important part regarding fitting and construction lines let me draw this on the board it is your job as a tailor to create a garment in our case a jacket for any figure, regardless of their figuration, so let's say this is, you know, an erect person, or here we have, you know, a, a, a stooping figure. 
And here we have the sleeves. Regardless of their figure, you should always cut and make the jacket so that at the very least, the horizontal line of your fabric, so imagine you have a horizontal stripe, is always parallel to the floor at all times. That is automatically going to make the grain run in the correct direction, the length grain that is, in the correct direction as well. Now, I am not saying that you should make the jacket so that at the center back you have one complete full stripe and the same on the center front as well and your chest line. That's just not possible. Therefore, the focus is on the horizontal grain, which is the chest line. And if you can shape the back and the front to the extent that shapes the figure but does not distort the lines so much, then you're successful. So that's all you need to know regarding construction lines for now. So let's summarize what we covered in today's lesson. Just like our bodies, all fabrics have a horizontal and a vertical axis. These axes are translated on our paper patterns in the form of construction lines. We have a vertical and a horizontal construction line. The most important construction lines are the center front, the center back, and the chest line. The center front and the back represent the warp and the chest line represents the weft. It is your job as a cutter to cut and make, or as a tailor let's say, to cut and make the garment so that the weft of your fabric is always parallel to the floor from all the different angles. That's it. Now before you go, we are on a mission. The mission is to unlock frozen tailoring talent on a worldwide scale. We do this by providing you and others with free quality content. If you want to join this mission with us, you can do so by helping us with a donation. How to do it exactly is on the donations page on our website. You can find the link in the description of this video. You can donate the amount that you want and you'll see exactly on that page how the money is used. Thank you very much. This was today's lesson and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care. We're going to take the construction lines and the simplified versions and took them, took them, <laughs> took them, and take and put them and and take and put together is quick. And put them together. My name is Reza. This was today's lesson, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care.